this week's tutorial video, we're gonna get into the real eye candy of the water material, the reflections and the refractions. Last week, we talked about computing the water depth, and the previous week, we talked about creating the ripples on the surface of the water. So if you haven't seen those two videos, I really recommend you go back and watch those before getting into this one. So first, we're gonna talk about reflections. And in order to create the reflect reflections, the first thing that I want to do is uh, disconnect all of the distractions from our scene. Uh, so here we have the color coming in, uh, and I'm going to disconnect that. Here we have opacity coming in, I'm going to disconnect that. And here we have normal coming in, I'm going to disconnect that. And the reason that we're disconnecting everything is because water has a lot of different components, and it's tricky to tell what one looks like when all the others are active. So we're gonna isolate these components and work on them one at a time. So I'm gonna go ahead and save my scene here. And then we'll switch over and take a look at what this material looks like. You can see that I've got my water surface and I have reflections, but you can barely tell because they're really, really blurry reflections. And that's because the default roughness material for the water is, I think, something like 0.5. And water is a lot smoother than that. So let's switch back to our shader. And I'm just going to create a constant here. And I'm going to set the roughness value to 0. And that's the value of uh, roughness for water. So that's what we're looking for. And I'm going to save this. And then let's switch back to our scene and see what we get. All right, so now you can see that my water is perfectly smooth. Our reflections are showing up. This is what we're looking for. We wanna, wanna take a look at our reflections. But you can see that there's something missing from these reflections. We can see some nice clouds from the sky reflected in the water, but what about the rocks and the walls? Uh, we're not seeing reflections from the rocks or the walls, uh, and why is that? Well. Uh, reflections are really complicated to create and Unreal has five different methods for creating reflections and we're gonna take a look and use three of those methods today. Uh, most scenes in Unreal use multiple of these methods and they all work together and that's what we're gonna be using. So we're already using the first method for creating reflections and that's the skybox. So our skybox is reflected in our scene, and that's the cheapest method for doing reflections. But if we want to reflect objects that are local, that are closer, uh, we need to use uh, the second method of reflection, and that's called light probes. If we come over here to our initial scene, you can see that I have, uh, and this is just the default simple scene that ships with Unreal. You can see that there's ob this object here. And if we look at our world outliner, you can see that this is called a sphere reflection capture. And what this is doing is from this point in the world, it's capturing a cube map. And then that cube map is used to create reflections in the scene. And this method of creating reflections is really cheap because the cube map can be rendered once and then uh, we can just look at the data in the cube map to see what our reflections are. So we're going to use this method for our water as well. You can come over here and uh, notice that I've created this object here and if we look in our world outliner you can see that this is a box reflection capture and it's really easy to add these to your scene. If you just come over here to the editor modes and turn on the mode panel then you just type ref reflection and you can add a box or a sphere reflection capture point and i'm using a box in this case because uh, my world uh, or my little pool here is square um, but both box and sphere work perfectly fine all right, so currently I've got this uh, reflection capture point disabled, um, but I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna check the visible box. And what you can see now is with my cube map enabled, 
I've got reflections here for the rocks and the wall. So whereas I was only reflecting the sky before, now I've turned on my cube map and you can see a reflection here for the rocks, for these rocks over here, and for this rock over here. I'm gonna to toggle this again so you can see uh, what the difference is. Now, like I said before, this these cube map reflections or these reflection volumes are a really cheap technique um, because it's something that's just captured once and then can be used over and over. However, they do have a downfall, and that is they're only accurate from the point where the cube map is captured. If I move over here, now you can see that there, there's the rock is still reflected, but the reflection appears in the wrong location. Uh, and so that's kind of a, a problem. And that's why there are uh, so many different methods for reflections and unreal. Reflections are complicated, and each of the different methods have its strengths and its weaknesses. The skybox reflection are the most uh, cheap method, but they're also the least, um, the least interesting because they only capture the sky. The reflection probe method that I'm using here is great if you're at the point where the probe was captured, but anywhere else, you still get the reflections. They're just not perfectly, perfectly accurate. So this method is also fairly cheap uh, and a little bit better than just using the sky, but it also has its own weaknesses. All right, so now we're gonna get into the third method, which is screen space reflections. And in order to enable screen space reflections, we need to jump back to the shader. So I'm gonna come over here to the water ripples demo, and I'm gonna select my root node and come to the, uh, the properties here. And here under translucency, you can see I have this property for screen space reflections. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna take the screen or the image that's being rendered, and if a pixel needs a reflection, it's gonna look and see if that reflection is available from any of the other pixels on the screen. So I'm gonna save this and let's take a look at what we get. All right, now you can see that we have some pretty amazing looking reflections. Actually, this rock is like perfectly represented. You can see the, um, the rock and as I swivel around here, no matter what position I'm in, these rocks always look just right, which is which is really, really nice. What it's doing is I need a reflection on my water here, and so it looks into the screen and says, oh, well, the object that's being reflected is right there, so I'll just map that as the reflection, which is really great. If I look up here, you can see the clouds in the sky reflected in the water. But the weakness of screen space reflections is that they can only use the data that's on the screen itself. So you can see as I scroll the, or as I tilt the camera down, there's this line here in the middle where it's not seeing the object on the screen anymore and so it can no longer reflect it. Once I get my camera to here, did you notice that reflection from the rock disappeared? It's because the rock is no longer on the screen, but then when I move up, you can see that now that the rock is on the screen again, now it can be reflected. The same thing is true on the sides. If you see the wall right here, it's being reflected, but as I move the camera over, there's this area here where it has to blend out because it's trying to reflect an object that's off screen, and it can't do that. It can only reflect pixels that are on the screen. Now the interesting thing here is when I scroll the camera down, you can see how the screen space reflections disappeared, but I still have the sky reflection and the cube map or the light probe reflection. So all three of these reflection methods are actually working together. And that's what's really cool uh, about the software is that it's using all three of these methods and whichever is the best uh, that's what it's going to use. So if it has a screen pixel, it's going to use that kind of reflection. If not, it's going to fall back to the probe reflections. And if even the probe reflections aren't available, it's going to go back to the sky, the skybox reflection. 
So this is a really nice feature of Unreal. It, it's got multiple methods of reflection that can all be used together and whichever one is best uh, for each pixel is the one that's going to be used. So pretty cool. Let's jump back to our shader and turn all of our features back on. I'm going to connect up my color and I'm going to connect up my opacity and I'm going to connect up my normal. So let's see what our scene looks like now that we have uh, our reflections tuned up and working the way that we want them to. All right, now that we've got good reflections in here, you can see that my water is looking really juicy. <laughs> That's the term that I like to, to use when, when my reflections are dialed in just right. All right, there is one other thing that I want to do here, and that is I think my normal map, my ripples are a little bit too strong, at least for this style of water. I've got this fairly shallow water that's enclosed and my ripples are really strong. So I'm going to switch back over here to my shader. And in the first water tutorial that we created, um, we added these controls for um, controlling how, how powerful the ripples are, but we've never actually used them. We've just been multiplying by one up until now. So I'm going to control uh, these ripples by setting the strength value to 0.2. And I'm going to control the larger ripples as well by setting their strength value to 0.2. And then because my sky is clear and sunny, it looks kind of weird that I've got my rain ripples going. So I'm just going to bypass my rain ripples for now and connect just the water ripples and skip the, the rain ripples function. I'm going to save this and let's take a look at our result. All right, so now you can see that our ripples are a little bit more soft. Uh, we got rid of our rain ripples, and now we have an effect that is a little bit more appropriate for this particular application. You know, you're welcome to set the, the rain ripple strength, or the, the water ripple strength to whatever looks good. And in this case, I just tuned it uh, to look correct for this particular environment. All right, now you might have noticed here looking, we're looking through this water at the rock underneath and the rock is uh, perfectly fine, which, which looks a little bit wrong. It, it's out of place, and that's because the refraction is missing. And what's refraction? Well, when light passes from air into the water, because the density of air and water are different, the light rays are bent a little bit. And that causes whatever is under the surface of the water to look distorted. And we want to add that to our water effect uh, to make the water look even more realistic. Um, and fortunately, in Unreal, this is really easy to do because most of the distortion effect that we want is created inside the root node. All we really need to do is to tell it how much refraction we want. We need to give it the index of refraction. An index of refraction is something that you can look on up on lots of different websites. It's basically the ratio between the density of air and the density of whatever um, the material is that you're passing into, in this case, water. And I happen to know that the index of refraction for water is 1.33. So we're going to add a constant value and I'm going to set this value to 1.33. And the other thing that I want to do is um, we're going to isolate things a little bit, just like we did for the reflections. I'm going to get rid of our uh, base color. I'm going to get rid of uh, our roughness. I'm going to get rid of our opacity. And for now, I'm just going to set opacity to a value of one. I am going to leave our normals going in. And what I want to do is show you what this looks like without reflect without refraction and then we'll switch the refraction on and I'll show you what it looks like with the refraction. Okay, so we set our opacity to zero, uh, which means uh, it's 100% transparent and we have no refraction. So basically our water is completely gone. So let's go ahead and turn refraction on and and to do that all we have to do is connect our index of refraction value to our refraction pin here and I'll save that. And then switch back to the scene. Oh, now 
the normals on the surface, the ripples are distorting uh, the rocks underneath the water um, because of that refraction that we're calculating. This is a really neat effect and it's gonna add a lot to our water surface. There is one more thing that we need to change though. You might notice as I rotate the camera around, there are a couple of little uh, visual glitches. Um, right here, we're refracting something that's uh, underneath the wall. And then as I rotate the camera down, you can see that there's this line here where my water just completely disappears. And these visual glitches are because we currently have our root node set to a refraction mode that doesn't work very well for water. This, this mode works well for other things, but when you have a large water plane like this, uh, it's not ideal. So let's switch back to the shader and I'm gonna select the root and we're gonna come down here to our refraction section and you can see that my refraction mode is currently set to index of refraction and in this description you can say that uh, you can see that right at the end there it says it's a poor fit for large refractive surfaces like water so we're gonna change this to pixel normal offset and you can read that description there if you like but basically pixel normal offset is a mode for refraction that's designed to work more correctly with water so let's save the scene and jump back over and see what we get. All right, so now you can see that we've still got a really nice looking distortion on the rocks, but we no longer have those weird glitches where uh, the water disappears or uh, where we can see underneath the wall. And this is perfect. So this is the refraction that we're looking for. Now let's go ahead and switch back over to our shader and put all of the components together. So here we're going to connect in our color and our color is based on depth. So we kind of have a lighter green color where it's shallow and a darker green or darker blue where it's deep. And then we're going to connect our opacity so that at glancing angles, our water is opaque. And uh, when we're looking down into it, the water is transparent. We're gonna set our roughness to a value of zero so that it's nice and smooth for our reflections. And we're gonna connect up our normals here and we have our index of refraction at 1.33. So now we're gonna be able to get all the water effects together. All right, so now we have our completed water shader. And this is pretty sweet. We've got reflections, refractions, we have opacity depth and opacity color, and we has our, have a really nice surface ripples. I hope you guys have uh, enjoyed this series on water. And I wanna ask you a question. Put your, uh, put your responses in the comments down below. I could go on and continue the series on water. We could do some additional tutorials on creating uh, geometry waves and we could create some water foam on the surface of the water if you'd like, or we could talk about a different topic. So let me know in the comments if you wanna continue the series on water or if you want a different topic. I hope you've enjoyed this week's tutorial. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to know when I release the videos. I try to get a new video out uh, every Thursday. We'll see you next week.